What is up you guys, my name is Arvizi and welcome back to Cosplay Convention Crisis. Now we just arrived at the room in the convention center and uh, the first thing I did after getting to the convention center was to go up to my room. I was sharing it with two other people who I'd never met before, but were in the comic club with me. Neither of my roommates had shown up yet. Naturally, I used this golden opportunity to claim one of the beds for myself and begin unpacking. Thursday was normally a short day, but I did have a cosplay planned. As I got into my suit, my eyes were drawn to a unique feature of the room. Is that a portrait of a gorilla? Why is that even here? The gorilla portrait had eyes that followed you around the room, like those old Uncle Sam posters. They stared down at my undressed body, ominously. Mm, this hotel was totally weird. Why was this thing even here? I tried to throw on my outfit in a hurry, Amanda was still waiting for me in room 304 after all. But before I could even leave, there was a knock on the door. Hello? Got tired of waiting. Someone is being a girl about getting dressed. Uh, yeah, sorry about how long it took. I was in a staring contest with a gorilla. Oh, what? I pointed out the strangely ominous gorilla painting for her. Amanda just seemed to find my reaction kind of funny, eh? I've seen weirder shit than that. Nothing phases me anymore, I guess. We going? Panel's already starting. Amanda was already off running towards the hallway before I could agree. I grabbed my backpack and my keycard before following after her. Amanda paused in the hallway, only a few yards away from the hall where all the panels were concentrated. Hey, one more thing about what happened on the bus, just real quick. Welp, that sounded serious. I paused to hear it out. Uh, what's up? I don't trust Makoto. Oh. You were doing such a bad job at showing it back at the bus. I don't mean I don't like her, that's fucking obvious. No, I mean, I think she's lying to you about something. Every word out of her mouth is uh, some kind of manipulation. I'd keep my distance if I were you. Lies? Why would you think that? To be honest, I don't know. She just gave me the creeps. Hell, I felt that even before the bathroom incident. I paused, unsure of how to respond. Amanda is one of the people I trust most. If she really didn't trust someone, I should take it seriously. Still, she really was taking this grudge of hers against Makoto way too far. Amanda looked down, then she nodded. If you say so, I just don't want to deal with your whiny ass when she reveals she's crazy. Afterwards, Amanda went back to the ranting about what particular panels she wanted to go to. It was as if that interlude had never happened. In a fact that would surprise no one, she rejected outright any of my suggestions for an anime-based panel, without even the slightest bit of consideration. Alright, so. It's not quite uh, lunch time yet, that means we have time to go to either the panel of uh, marvelous uh, movie adaptations or the interview with the creator of Bane. Uh, what do you think? Uh, do they have any guests at the marvelous movie one? Nah, it was uh, fan submitted. So tiny projector, powerpoint presentation, probably a guy who sucks at public speaking? Amanda shrugged. They could know something about comic book movies, though. You never know, right? Plus, not necessarily a guy. The con floor was already packed with activity, much of it was in front of the registration desk, where a line of people out the door were waiting to buy badges. And this was why buying badges ahead of time is smart. One second, someone is calling me. Oh god damn it, it's work, what do they want? I raised an eyebrow. Since when did Amanda have a job? They? You can't be serious. You guys can't handle this without me. This is my off weekend. I told you guys way in advance. Yeah, I know it's important, but time away is important too. Do you know how much stress you cause me? She took her phone off her ear for a second and leaned back towards me. Can you go ahead? We can just meet each other in the food court at lunch. Are you sure? Positive. There's no way they're taking me into coming into work on the Canton weekend. No way in hell, but I need to take this right now. 
All right, you have my number, I suppose? Oh, I wandered around the hallway, looking for something to do. Now that Amanda wasn't here, I could consider going to one of the anime panels, but I kept on losing my train of thought. That had been her work calling, right? Amanda had relatively frequent absences and cancellations from social activities, at least uh, over the past two years or so, but I didn't recall her once mentioning any kind of job. I would have to ask her about that at some point. In the back of my mind, I considered the possibility that I might run into Makoto. If I did, what would happen when it was time to meet up with Amanda for lunch? The incident on the bus wasn't to be repeated. I decided to go outside for an hour, watch some people roll into the con. I might even see a cosplay or two. It was nice out. The grass field in front of the entrance made an excellent place to rest in. I wondered idly when the Crash Bros tournament was going to be. I needed to sign up for that. All my normal worries were about to be superseded quite soon. I barely noticed at first. A group of three sci-fi cosplayers, one blue girl and two dressed like robots, were walking around the grass holding up some kind of fake scanning device. This appears to be the location specified on the locator, your royal highness. I just closed my eyes and tried to ignore them. What show were they supposed to be from anyway? Is this where the strongest signal was coming from? Negative. We lost that signal, your royal highness. We believe some kind of cloaking technology is the cause. Oh, they were role-playing their characters. Wonderful. They saw me trying to sleep here, right? And we believe the signal was associated with the culprit, correct? Affirmative. Very well. Then I will speak to the planetary resident who is giving off the weaker signal. I can obtain more information from her. That was the moment that I awoke to someone screeching in my face. Hello, Earth resident? Are you alive? Yes? My eyes shot open. The woman in the blue alien costume was standing right above me. They surrounded me. I had one of the robot cosplayers flanking me on either side. Whoa, what the... Uh, excuse me, can I help you? Oh, excellent. I didn't think you were dead, but I didn't know if Earth resident slept. So I had concerns. What is she exactly? She? What? Why is this woman calling me a she? Someone was uh, fucking with me? Someone must have been fucking with me. Our records uh, indicate that this creature is a human. But where are her breasts? The human does not have breasts? What? Uh, he. I'm a he. I'm a guy. I narrowed my eyes. That reports indicate that human species uh, possess a gender besides female. They are still in the process of evolving the Y chromosome out of their genetic makeup. So this is a male human? That's why there aren't any breasts? That is correct, your royal highness. That is so interesting. The girl in the blue body paint practically shook with excitement as she said it. Jesus, she was method acting hard. I was getting pretty tired of this shit already. Can you tell me what's going on now? Certainly, my name is Talia, and I am the princess and Jessica of Avia. I've come to take you into custody with the intention of extracting information related to a high crime against the people of Avia. Custody, huh? You guys are really cute with your character acting, but would you mind doing it with someone else? This isn't funny. I tried to push my way past them, only for one of the robot cosplayers to suddenly grab my wrist. Before I realize what's happened, my wrists are restrained behind my back by something cold and metal. Hey, what are you doing? Aha, my genoids weren't going to let you escape so easily. Come now, we must transport you back to the holding cells. This has officially stopped being funny. Get me out of these things right the fuck now. I turned around in time to see one of the robot cosplayers open up. There wasn't a cosplayer inside. Welp. That wasn't normal. It looked like it had uh, some internal sensor or something that was scanning me with. It made a strange beeping noise. That sure didn't look like something that a cosplayer could make. This was the first time I seriously entertained uh, the notion that these weirdos might actually be aliens. Look, I swear I have no idea what's going on. Can we please take a second and talk this out? 
Maybe remove uh, whatever you put on my wrist? I cannot do this, Earth Male. The crimes I am investigating are among the most uh, heinous uh, in the history of my planet. You must be brought back for questions. I wiggled my hands, no luck. These weren't a pair of cheap handcuffs like you could get in a novelty shop in a mall. I wouldn't be able to escape from these without at least bolt cutters or a blowtorch. Uh, do not struggle so much, I'm not trying to harm you, but my genoids restraining cuffs are designed to make escape attempts quite painful. Please relax, I do not intend to harm you unless it becomes needed. That distinctly sounded like a threat. Despite my misgivings, I stopped struggling against the cuffs. Your Royal Highness, our scans have picked up a new signal, with the same trace signature as the original signal inside of the building. Inside of the building? Is the cloaking device they were using down? Likely not. It suggests that the cloaking device was simply not powerful enough to hide the signal from the closed radio scan. So then, we can find her? Yes? Indeed. Excelsior! Talia made the strange celebratory clicking sound. By this point I was so confused I couldn't even process it. It was just one more mental indignity on the top of the string of them that had been the last few minutes. We must move immediately. The dastardly thief shall not escape me again. Wait, wait, what about me? What about... One of us... Uh, would need to leave you behind to escort the human male back to the ship, your royal highness. My name is Jacob, stop calling me the human male. To escort Jacob back to the ship. Talia scratched her head. Can we just escort this Jacob with us into the building? Yes, however, there is a risk that Jacob's accomplice might free him. I rolled my eyes. I don't have an accomplice. I wasn't involved in anything, this is bullshit. Talia paused, I paused too. A moment of silence passed between us before she arrived to add an answer. Let us take her with us, then it is quite likely she can at least aid us as a guide inside the building. Before I could protest, the gynods reached down and dragged me to my feet. She picked me up uh, into the air easily with a single hand. Ok, that also didn't seem like something a normal cosplayer could do. Onward my friend, justice demands it. What the fuck is going on with this game? Got them. So many aliens. Oh, is that Monica? That looks like Monica. Got them Monica. Why is Monica in the game? Oh god. Anyway, the longer I was forced to walk uh, with the bizarre trio, the more my fear and confusion turned back uh, to annoyance. Talia was basically a 4 year old. She would react to everything she saw by getting wide eyed and pointing to it. The worst part though was that I couldn't escape. Every time I tried to move more than a few feet in any direction, one of the gynoids would pull me back. No one stopped to help me. To them, it must have looked like part of some cosplay. Talia pointed to a man and woman dressed as Joker and Harley Quinn. Why are so many of Earth's creatures humans? Why are so many of these Earth humans wearing such varied apparel? Is this what you were while doing traditional or spiritual activities? I rolled my eyes. What? No, not really. This is a geek uh, fandom convention. We dress up in costumes at this based uh, on our favorite shows. What is a show? So, is that a religious ceremony of some type? Anthropology analysis systems rate a chance it is religious holiday at 78%. I arrived at the next piece of evidence that suggested that perhaps Talia might not be from this planet at the door with a normal turning handle. Talia handled it with less than finesse. For the next minute, the girl proceeded to try repeatedly to open the door with various hand gestures. Then she tried telling it to open. Then she tried the hand gestures. Then she jumped around in frustration. Can't even open a door, goddamn. I just stood there dumbfounded. If this was just play acting, then uh, she was awful good at it. It sure seemed like this woman, who was probably an adult, couldn't open a door handle right. Do you do you need help with that? Maybe. I walked over, turned around so I could use my hands, and then easily twisted open the doorknob. Incredible! You're really not from around here, are you? 
I squinted carefully. The more closely I looked at her skin, the less it looked like body paint. Indeed, I am unsure how you came to believe you were being deceived. After all, we had not attempted any disguises or infiltration tactics. Talia leveled her head upwards and let loose a series of strange clicking sound from earlier. Was this our species showed amusement? You're also kind of a dork, aren't you? My translation program does not even know what that means. Talia and I continue past the panel hallways, towards the entrance to both the game room and the deal room. After a while, I tried to make another innocent plea. I was hoping that now that I was more convinced she was actually an alien and had established some rapport, I could get the bindings off. You've told me that someone stole something important from your planet, I assure you I had nothing to do with that. I never even left Earth. I don't know why your machine keeps on telling you it was my fault, but I've never done nothing wrong. I want to prove it to you however I can. I am the Zosikar of Avaya. Jacob, if you are genuinely guiltless, then you will be treated mercifully. I'm a defender of truth and the law. What would I do if an innocent was hurt under my watch? You have not been the most cooperative prisoner thus far, but I like you well enough. I hope you are indeed telling the truth and I can release you when the situation is cleared up. Without hurting you even. Uh, thanks. Okay. Well, that hasn't uh, gotten the cuffs off, but her posture uh, was much less threatening. Progress? Yeah, some progress, I guess. We passed uh, by the dealer room without incident. That only left one major hallway. Sounds squeaked out of the robot's chest, probably the scanners. Talia tensed. I tensed too. We turned uh, the corner to the game room and uh, then we ran into a familiar face. Mokoto! Oh, well, Jacob? Thief! Talia reached uh, into her suit and uh, seemingly from nowhere drew a comical looking sci-fi weapon. She held it aloft in one hand, glaring sternly at Makoto. For her part, Makoto was still gasping. Return the treasure you stole from my people and surrender at once, you vile deviant. Do that and your cell will be comfortable. She leveled the gun towards Makoto. Some people crowded around the scene from their whispers. Perhaps they might have thought this was some kind of photo shoot or game. Just like my earlier captivity. Oh, I know you. It's the Jessicar. Wait, wait, what? Mokoto took a step backwards, practically turning away bashfully. Talia kept her toy looking gun steady at her. I guess I'm going to have to give in and. What? A flash of red light blinded me. I didn't know what was happening but the sounds of weapons firing convinced me to duck. Ah, good plan. When the light faded, Mokoto had shifted into a strange red latex outfit that clung tightly to the curves of her body. Around us, the people who'd been watching blinked. A few complained about the light show. At least for the moment, I'm more concerned about the strange sci-fi weapon that had suddenly appeared in Makoto's hand. It was aimed at Talia, who had recited her aim back on Mokoto. They were in a Mexican standoff. There was one major change in the situation though. Behind me, both robots Talia had been accompanied by were laying on the ground destroyed. Smoke rose from their chests in confusion. Had Makoto shot them? On the upside, the moment they went down, the cuffs around my wrist clicked open. Perhaps because the robot they were connected to was destroyed. Oh, you thought just because you found me that I'd be easy pickings? That's cute. No wonder it was so easy to get past you the first time. Don't you dare mock me, you villainous girl. I am not a mere gynoid. I am the Zosikar of Vaya. If you think I can be dispatched that easily, you're mistaken. You're coming home with me. If you resist further, I will bring home your ashes instead. That's the car of Avea. If you don't bring me in, I wonder how long you'll have that title for. 
Maybe they've already demoted you, and you don't know it? Interplanetary communication can be so woefully imprecise, you know? Talia spat to the side. I crawled near the downed gynoids. With some luck, maybe I could use them for cover. Whatever was going on, I was nearly positive those guns were dangerous. I told you to be silent. Talia fired a warning shot in the air and then retrained her gun on Makoto. Part of the ceiling burst away in a haze blue light. A few people pointed and chattered, but most uh, still seemed to think it was a show. A few were even clapping. The dynamic is disturbed by the sound of running and someone pushing through the crowd. I looked towards the sound, the people in front were parted and the new arrival entered the mix. Makoto? And Jacob? Amanda put her hands to her mouth in shock. I wiggled my cuffed hands and groaned. Can someone please uh, help me over here? Before she can respond, Makoto gave me a wink and interjected. Give me just a second, babe. Talia turned back uh, towards me, probably remembering my existence for the first time since the shooting had started. She looked like she'd been slapped. Ah, so you were an accomplice all along. You lied to me. You pretend not to be involved. Your sentence will be incredibly painful, Jacob. What? No, Makoto. Can you tell me what the fuck's going on? Probably not the absolute best time for explanations, sweetie. She was right, of course. A single distraction could give the other girl the advantage. Surprisingly, though, it was neither Talia nor Mokoto who made the next move to change the situation. It was Amanda. I cannot believe I'm doing this. She took a sidelong glance towards me. Of all people, was that fear in her eyes? Amanda took a step forward and swung her arms in a dramatic circle. It almost looked like dancing. It might have been the weirdest thing I'd seen all morning already. Amanda didn't dance. What? As her body moved, strange lights appeared from thin hair. Clinging to her, in moments her entire form was covered in a blinding pink light. I hadn't expected this. Talia gasped. Curses! One of the Earth's defenders here? What a dire turn for this situation. If the lights weren't enough by themselves, Amanda was soon covered in a second wave of throbbing energy. Multi-shaded pink flashes that took the shape of hearts? What? Oh, of course, in a sudden burst of movement, Amanda emerged from the pink heart, spreading the light behind her like a halo. But this was an Amanda different than any I'd ever seen in my life. Her short, boyish hair had been covered into a swirling back-length mass of blonde locks. Her green lantern cosplay had been totally replaced by a pink baby doll-esque outfit adorned with lace and ruffles. She was even carrying a sparkling pink scepter. As she emerged from the transformation, Amanda's body moved robotically into a dramatic pose, with her scepter raised high in the air. It was like she was losing a fight with her own body. As far as it sails, love will prevail. At last, the transformation was complete, the light dissipated, save for a halo of random sparkling, and she swiped her scepter towards the two combatants. Magical Defender Pink will save the day! It was only at the moment that Amanda seemed to have realized she had an audience. The crowd was watching, I was watching. Makoto and Talia were watching, her face burned to the brightest shade of red I had ever seen anyone's face reach in my entire life. Oh, uh, her arms flew over her body in a desperate attempt to cover up all of her exposed skin. She was practically crying. This was the approximate limit of my ability to process information. Aliens? Sure, why not? Makoto has sci-fi weapons and wears a boner uh, induced latex cat suit. She was already weird anyway. But this? This? I've known Amanda for 16 years, literally the vast majority of my life. And she was some kind of uh, boho sojo? My brain snapped. What the fuck is happening? Makoto had looked pretty shocked by the entire transformation, but recovered a few seconds later. Feeling a little underdressed there, cutie? 
I didn't know pink was your color, hehe. <laughs> Oh, shut up, I've never transformed in public is all. Talia turned and pointed her laser weapon at Amanda. There's nothing you can do to stop this, magical defender. Please leave immediately. This criminal stole one of the three sacred treasures from the secret vault of Avia. She must be punished. Her face softened. It was more of a plea than a threat. Amanda still tried to keep her body covered with her left hand but pointed the tip of her scepter towards Talia. Earth is our ju jurisdiction. You don't have the right to do this. If you make a move toward any humans, I will stop you. She turned to Makoto. Though she tried to bury her cheeks in her shoulder to hide the blush. If you want me to save your stupid butt from this alien, who you definitely horribly wronged, you really should shut your mouth for 5 seconds, okay? I wasn't able to say a word. I was barely able to even keep up with the conversation. It's really silly that you think I need your help with anything. Her green darkened. Watch this. Huh? Talia realized a moment too late that her gun had been on the wrong target. Before she could bring it back to focus on Makoto, a series of red blasts rang out uh, from her weapons. Oh. Talia dodged, opening fire with her own series of laser strikes. What the fuck's going on, man? What? But the sudden shock of Makoto's attack warned about. A red beam struck Talia right in the chest. It burned a hole through her and she fell on the ground with a scream. Uh, spectator 1. Uh, how do you think they achieved that effect? I don't know, but this was fucking amazing. What the fuck is going on? In the chaos, Amanda rushes over to Talia's side. Trailing guitary sparkles with every step. Her hands went searching around, uh, checking for vitals. Jacob, please help me. That did it. I was still almost paralyzed, but the request was just enough to get me to scramble to her side. Blue alien blood dirtied the carpet. Talia was still moving, but clearly fading fast. I looked back for uh, Makoto, but she vanished without a trace. It must have been easy in the confusion. You must return me to the, my ship! She gripped the front of my shirt. Her blood covers it. Even if I die, there is a contingency. What could I do? My brain was racing too fast. How could I even do that? Where was her ship? What would happen if I did? Clarity only came when I felt a gloved hand on my shoulder. It was Amanda. And she was shaking almost as much as I was. Do you know which way she came from? Uh, fuck, uh, front entrance? Got it. With the slightest of ease, she threw a girl over her shoulder and made a dash for the exit. Within seconds the two were lost in the sea of people coming into the con. Now I was only one remaining. Me and the destroyed Ginoids from... Oh no, wait, the Ginoids had vanished too. How did that happen? The fuck was it? The crowd had already begun to disperse. The show was over. Eventually, an employee from the con came over and asked if uh, I was part of their cosplay group. Something about the damage to the ceiling. I was only able to stop uh, stuttering long enough to deny it. Fucking fuck. What the fuck? Okay. I stumbled back to my room and threw off my costume. Luckily no one uh, else was around. The princess of bags suggested my roommates had at least moved in already. I fell back on my bed. Talia, that girl hadn't been human, Makoto? She knew Talia? She was the thief that Talia had been hunting, and now Talia was dead. And Amanda? Where to even start with that one? The flashy transformation sequence? The magical costume change? The fact that the tomboy queen was caught dead in public? In an outfit that looked half like a negligee? I gazed at the painting on the wall. The gorilla gazed back down into me. This was so weird, man. This was way too weird, but we'll continue on the next episode. Apparently there's aliens in this game. I thought this was only cosplayers, but no. They seem like real aliens. God damn. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this video here, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this episode in the comment section below. If you actually enjoyed the video, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. As always, I hope to see you again.